Hello and welcome to our menu masterclass. Uh, my name is Chantelle. I'm an operations manager here at DoorDash. Um, I've been working at DoorDash for about four years and most of my time has been focused on merchant success, um, specifically driven through uh, effective menu management. And I'm Becca. I've also been at DoorDash for about four years, uh, primarily in merchant operations focused on onboarding success. Hi, everyone. My name is Bukola. I'm a product marketer for DoorDash, and I've also been at DoorDash for almost four years. So great to be here. So in today's session, Beck and I are going to be walking you through a demo of how to use uh, merchant, uh, the menu manager system. We're just going to go over some basics of how to set up your menu, and then I'll pass it over to Ricola, who will go more in depth on how to optimize your uh, modifiers to drive sales. And she'll also give you a little bit of an overview on our new merchant mobile manager app, uh, which you can also now download in the app store. So this is just going to be an overview of some of the things that we'll touch base on in the demo. Stella, who works on our strategy team, is also out there and available to answer any questions if you have any that come up during the demo. So just to jump right into it, um, I'm going to go ahead and touch base on just some of the basics of uh, setting up your menu and setting up uh, some items and categories, and then I'll uh, hand you over to Becca to touch base on modifier management. So up at the top here, uh, if you toggle into this more settings feature, you can see that you can rename your menu right here. So this menu name on this first uh, in this first bar right here is just going to be a, a name for your menu that you're going to see internally only. So this is just something that you want you want to name this something that's recognizable to you and any staff at your restaurant who might be um, working on this menu as well. Uh, this customer facing name is how it will actually appear on the platform. So you'll want to make sure that this is more specific. Um, so if it's a lunch menu, a dinner menu, breakfast menu, you want to make sure that you're naming it adequately so that your customers understand what exactly they're looking at. Uh, if you do want to adjust your store hours, you can click this button right here. It'll toggle into a new screen that will allow you to uh, set any kind of uh, specific hours for your store. You can also do some temporary deactivations. Um, so if you're really busy this week and you want to be reactivated on Monday, you can go ahead and schedule that in advance and it will just automatically reactivate your store Monday. Um, we also do have this new preview menu uh, feature as well. So while you're editing your menu, if you want to see those changes applied in real time, you can toggle out and preview the menu at any time, and you'll see that those, those changes are applying real time. I'm going to jump right into category creation. So categories are um, just sections of your menu uh, that encompass specific items. So you can see on here we've already got mains, desserts, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and just add one for appetizers here. Description is optional for categories. I uh, only really recommend using that if, uh, say, every item in that category is going to have the same options or it's going to come with the same things. Like all of these mains come with a side of rice. You would want to include that in this category description so you don't have to apply it to every single item. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that. Categories will not display on the actual live app until you have at least one active item added to it. So I'm going to immediately go in here and add an item. So this new tax rate feature here, you can input any kind of custom tax rate if you have one for specific items. Um, if not, you can toggle over this little information tab and it'll show you exactly what it'll apply to if you decide to leave this, this blank. 8.625 is, is typically what it's going to be in California, um, but it could be different depending on your area. Typically, you'll also want to add a description in here so customers know exactly what they're getting when ordering from your platform. And then this uh, selection for um, item contains alcohol, it won't allow you to click this unless your business has actually been allow listed for alcohol. If you do need to do that, you'll have to contact our support team and they can allow list your business assuming you uh, meet all of the criteria. Um, down here as well, we do have a new daily limit uh, quantity. So if you only wanna be able to sell, say 15 of a specific item, then uh, you can put, you can toggle this on, select the number that you want to sell. And then once you've sold 15 of that item for that day, it'll automatically 86 the item until the next day. Once you save it, it's going to immediately suggest that you add a photo to this item. We have a ton of data to suggest that adding photos to menu items will increase your sales up to about 44%. We also do have another masterclass later today at 1.30 that will go more into depth into specific data points and how you can optimize your menu further via uh, adding photos. So you can see here as well that I have the option of either uploading a new photo or I can select from this bank of already approved photos. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this one and save that on that item. 
Great. And since that one has already been pre-approved, you can see that it's already showing up here, which means it'll also show up live on the platform. So let's say I am trying to add an item that doesn't already have a pre-approved photo. So I'm going to go into uh, adding another item. So to uh, add a new photo, I'm going to go into here, select the photo that I want to add, and then submit it for review. Right here, I have the option of moving it around. I can zoom in or out and adjust that as needed. And then I'm going to submit that for review. After you've submitted it, it does take up to two to three days for that to go through approvals. Basically, we're just looking to make sure that it meets all of our quality standards and the item that you're trying to apply that photo to is actually that item because mistakes happen. So you'll see that until it is actually approved, it's just going to have this little pending symbol on it um, for about two days. Once it's been approved, you should see it just automatically apply onto your menu on the platform. Or if it does get rejected, you would see that it looks like this with a uh, caution symbol on it, and you will have received an email with the reason for that rejection. So also, since I added the appetizers category and it automatically applied it to the bottom, if you want to shift around your category orders, you can click into this settings again and click rearrange categories. And then I can just drag that up to the top if that's where I want to place it. If I didn't select that I only want to be able to sell a certain quantity of an item on a specific day, but I did still sell out of that item, I also have the option to come in here and select that it's going to be unavailable for the rest of the day today. So if I select that, it's going to clear out this item. It won't be seen on the customer platform at all, and it'll just automatically reactivate tomorrow when my store reopens. I also have the option to indefinitely deactivate it, in which case it won't reactivate until I select again that it is available. You do also have the option to delete it fully if you think that you will never sell that item again. But these are much quicker and easier if you're planning to reactivate it again at some point. So let's say I uh, forgot to add something to this item and I just want to edit the details of it. I can just use this little pop out right here and add in a description if I missed a description earlier. And I'll save that and it'll just automatically apply that to the menu. If you're ever adding in a description that, that tells the consumer that they should be able to get the choice of something, like in this instance, on this pretzel, they should be able to order either cheese or mustard. We always want to also build out that modifier so that the consumer doesn't just have to use special instructions, which can get very confusing both for the customer and also for you in the kitchen. I'm going to actually pass over to Becca now, though, and she'll go a bit more into building out that modifier and specific modifier management. Awesome. Thanks. So now that we were able to learn a little bit about some items and descriptions, um, we'll teach you how to add and edit some modifiers on these items. And so for this soft pretzel, we'll go ahead and start there. The biggest difference between version one and version two is that in version one, your modifiers are on the item level. So you can actually see those modifiers if you pull up an item. Here, your modifiers are actually going to live on a completely different tab altogether. And so this will make it easier for you to share modifiers between menus if you have like a lunch menu and a dinner menu. And so let's go ahead and add a new modifier and we'll put it on that pretzel. So we'll go ahead and call it dipping sauce. And then you have to apply it to an item. So you won't be able to just create a modifier and let it live without being attached to something. So we'll wanna go ahead and select that newly created soft pretzel item. And then down here, we wanna go ahead and add our options. So the first one is going to be cheese. For now, we'll set it at $0 because it comes with it. And then we'll press that little plus there to go ahead and get the second choice available. And so based on the description, it does look like it is going to be a required selection. So we'll want to go ahead and toggle that on. And then we'll click Save. And so while that's working, um, it'll pop back up, and then there will be a new set of options that were not available originally. So as she already described to you about being able to mark items as unavailable, you can do the same thing for extras. So if you run out of that cheese or that mustard or both, you can mark it as unavailable just for today. If you need to mark it as unavailable indefinitely, because maybe you don't know when you're going to get more cheese or mustard, you can do that in here as well. And then if we scroll down, we can toggle this on to allow multiple selections. So what that means is, let's say you want them to be able to pick both cheese and mustard if they would like to have both. And so we can come in here and assign a price to both. But then down here, we can set it so that they have to at least pick one, but they can pick up to two. And then the first one is going to be free. So that means that after they make their first selection, the other one will appear available for them to choose as well, but it will come for a small price if you so choose. And then we can go ahead and add another one for our nacho item. So there was a choice of meat, so we'll call this one meat choice. And we'll search for our nachos. 
And then we'll go ahead and add chicken, beef, and no meat as our options. And then we do want it to be required, but we don't want them to be able to select multiple. So we're gonna leave that toggled off. And then just to show you what it will look like on the live site, we can scroll down here, select our soft pretzel item. And now you can see that there's a required choice of cheese or mustard. You must select at least one, but you'll notice that the price only changes if you select the two because of that free option available. All right, and so now if you wanna edit an existing modifier, so let's take this one for instance. So on nachos, typically nachos come with a variety of things. In this case, our nachos would come with jalapenos, tomatoes, sour cream, guacamole, and cilantro. So let's say a customer doesn't want one of those things. Currently, without this modifier, they would have to go in and put it in the special instructions. As Chantelle had touched on earlier, that could lead to kitchen issues, it could lead to confusion, it might lead to the customer not being satisfied in the end. And so having a remove option modifier, as Bucola will get into later, is going to be the best way to make sure that the customer is satisfied. And so at this point, we can go ahead and turn it over to Bucola. That's the end of our demo. Um, we will be in the solution station after this if you have any specific questions or you can feel free to ask at the end and she'll go ahead and go into more in depth what to expect. Awesome. Thank you, Chantelle and Becca, for that awesome demo. So now um, we'll get into how you can manage your store menu. So we walked you through Menu Manager on a computer, but let's summarize it, it to help us better understand how we can elevate the customer experience. Um, as you may already know, there are three ways that you can receive DoorDash orders for your store, either on your tablet, email, but then you can also receive it directly on your opponent's cell, AKA your POS system. So with a POS integration, while you can also receive DoorDash orders on your POS system, you can also manage your menu from your POS system in the same manner. So depending on your POS provider, ways that you can manage your menu will, will, may vary. So while we would like to like go over each one, like for Toast or Square, there's so many and we don't have enough time. But if you do have any questions about menu manage, management for your specific integration provider, please come see us at, at the solution station. So if you are in a POS, POS integration, or I guess in other cases, you may know it as POS protocol, while you will still have access to Menu Manager, do keep in mind that any updates made on Menu Manager is not permanent. So if you happen to make an update later on your POS menu, once your menu refreshes to DoorDash, any updates made on Menu Manager will no longer apply. If you have any other questions about menu management, you can also contact your POS integration provider directly. So Becca and Chantel went through this earlier, so I won't spend too much time on this, but do keep in mind that whether you're on POS protocol or a different type of order protocol, you can temporarily or permanent, permanently um, deactivate menu items from your menu, both on uh, menu manager, but then also on the business mobile management app, which I will talk about real, in just a few seconds. So um, as Chantal mentioned, when you do want to deactivate a menu item, please make sure you check on the reactivate at the end of the day to ensure that the menu populates back on your menu the next day if you know that for, for a fact you will be selling that item the next day. So let's talk about mobile menu management. So Becca and Chantal, as I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, walk you through menu manager on computer. Did you know that you can also access menu manager on the DoorDash business, manage, business manager app? If you didn't, well, now you know. Um, how you can access Menu Manager on the Business Manager app, basically click download the app. If you don't have the app already, you can definitely scan this QR code on your screen. Once you download the app, on the home page, you'll see the option for Menu right there in the middle. Click on Menu, and then you'll see all the list of menus that are associated with your store. Um, once you do that, you can tap on the menu you would like to update, then click on the menu item that you would like to edit. You can also update availability of modifiers on Menu Manager from the mobile app as well. So here's a short overview of how to do so. Um, if you have any questions, as mentioned before, you can definitely come see us at the Solution Center. But the same way you can manage menu items on the mobile app, you can also manage your modifiers from there as well. So now let's talk about how we can give um, customers more flexibility with modifiers. So modifiers give customers greater customization options. Um, one way that you can give customers more flexibility is with price modifiers. So price modifiers basically allows the amount to be added to the price of the item the modifier option is linked to. So here's an example that you see here on the screen. Um, another example would be if you're selling french fries. Um, if, the fries, if you know the fries comes in two to three different sizes, instead of creating two to three different menu items for that same menu item, you can 
just create a modifier group to that french fries menu item with the option for a small, maybe a small is like $3, your medium is like $5, and your large size of fries is $7. One thing to keep in mind is that you want to make sure the modifier options are priced accurately so that to ensure the price customers customers should pay or are paying is accurate as well. So now let's talk about tips and resources and how you can further elevate the customer experience with your DoorDash menu. If you ignore anything else I've said today or we've said today, um, one thing that you should always keep in mind is that to aim to make sure your menu is easy and clear for customers to be able to understand and, and order um, from your store. Um, how you can do so, we have a few tips here. So first is customization is key. Give customers the ability to customize their menu when they're ordering from your store on DoorDash. That way customers can easily add or remove ingredients to get exactly what they want. And it can help you and your team fill orders quickly as opposed to having to read special instructions that says, hold the jalapenos. Also include thorough menu item des descriptions. The key to a great item description is keeping it short, sweet, and informative. Things you wanna include are ingredients, um, allergens, special qualities, any size that come with the dish, and make sure like you're also included any qualities that are unique to your restaurant. Some examples of like items, item descriptions that you may want to add is like an item quantity. So like for example, if you're selling dumplings, you want to include in an item description that six dumplings comes with this order. Another example would be if you're selling drinks or soda, you want to include uh, descriptions or modifiers to let the customer order what flavor or soda that they may want from your store. Also, include menu photos. So I won't go too deep into this topic because we will we'll talk about that later on today, but as Pinky mentioned in the chat today, customers like to shop with their eyes. So you want to make sure like you're, you have appealing and appetizing menu, menu photos attached to your menu as well. Um, one thing I will say is that um, menus that have menu photos tend to see a lot more sales, especially on a, on a DoorDash store. And if you like, we also have the option to schedule a free photo shoot. Um, and you can do so by visiting the Solution Center or contacting, contacting our support team. Um, you can also use modifier groups. So there's different ways you can use modifier groups, which um, Becca touched on earlier, but I'll kind of dig a little further into that. So one example is by using modifier groups to give customers the options for temperature. So if you're selling meat, for example, especially burgers or steak, um, they should have a, a temperature modifier group attached with the options for rare, medium rare, medium well, I guess in my case, like it real dead, so like well done. You wanna make sure like you add that option to your menu. Also, you want to create a modifier group to give customers the options to add or remove um, ingredients. Um, adding or removing ingredients allow customers to like remove essentially what they want, or what they don't want, and what they may want to add. And um, especially if your menu item allows for this, it gives them more flexibility of how they order with your store. So core ingredients like lettuce in a salad or ingredients that are part of a pre-made pre -made item, like the basil, in tomato sauce should not be listed if they cannot be reasonably accommodated. So those aim to for things are that can be reasonably accommodated. Preparation preferences. Items that require a choice of preparation, like eggs, toast, potato, coffee, or tea, should have a modifier group with all the with all of the preparation options. So for example, you can give customers the options for how they would like their eggs. Um, over easy, scrambled, boiled whatever your restaurant um, provides. For coffee or tea, you can um, offer a choice of milk types. As you guys may already know, there's so many milk types out there, like oat milk, almond milk. I won't get into all of that, but if you do have that option in your restaurant, you wanna make sure you have it offered on your menu as well. Variant spice levels. Items that have variant spice levels should have a modifier group with options such as mild, medium, or spicy, or whatever the next level for your restaurant that may be. If your menu item comes with like different ingredients such as like sauces or dressing or other condiments, give, op give the customer the option to have it on the side. That way they're able to add the condiments or dressing or whatever it may be to the item to their taste. Substitutions. So can a customer substitute a side salad for a side of fries at your restaurant? If so, give them that option. In this example, one way to think about this is like with the modifier group, you can include the option to substitute french fries for a salad or french fries for onion rings. Just different, there's different ways you can go about it, but if your restaurant offers this option, give it to customers on, the, um, on DoorDash as well. And then last but definitely not least, give customers the option of selecting whether or not they want condiments or utensils with their order. 
Simply create a new modifier group for them and assign that modifier group to your relevant menu items. The planet and your customers will thank you. So while we shared a number of tips of how you can use Menu Manager, there's other things that you can do as well, or we have other tips and resources that you can access on your own time. Resources that you can access um, include our Learning Center. So if you didn't know, we do have a Learning Center on get.doordash.com. On the Learning Center, you can find walkthroughs, product tutorials, and other best practices that you can access. So um, head over to our Learning Center to like click through and see what else is up there. If you don't know how to access it, you can also take out your phones and scan this QR code right here. And now um, we'll get into Q&A, but before we start, um, as you walked in, you may have received a survey, so please take the chance or a few minutes to fill out the survey before you walk out. But any questions? Uh, the question was, is there one kind of menu modifier type that is more successful than another, or is there a really common menu modifier type that you feel like restaurants who are really successful on the DoorDash platform use? Yes. Um, one thing that we've seen uh, um, used quite a lot is modifiers for different menu item sizes. So as I mentioned before, like if, you, if you're selling things like french fries or drinks that come in different sizes, we've seen that work really well with merchants that have that as a modifier in, in their menu as opposed to having it listed as like a separate menu item. It just, one, helps make your menu look more concise and optimized and short enough and easy to understand. But then it also lets customers know that if they're ordering a certain item, there's options available to them. So they kind of have an idea that if I order French fries, for example, or like onion rings. They're, if I'm not really feeling that hungry, I know for a fact if I order a small, a small portion is coming to me. If I'm, really, if I'm feeling really hungry, I know if I order a large, a large portion is coming to me. So basically giving the customers, um, helping customers know what to expect, we've seen have worked really well on the platform. Uh, nested modifiers, is that something uh, that works with DoorDash? I'm not too familiar with um all of the different platforms. So I'm just curious about that. Like, uh, for example, just uh, if I want to add a juicy tender to an entree, but that tender has three options of spice levels, you know, is that an option? So as of right now, unfortunately, that is not available in the self-serve menu manager tool. We do have a number of new features that we're looking to roll out in the next uh, quarter, a half, and the rest of the, of the 2023 year. Um, but that's definitely one of those things that's been scoped a lot, and it, we, uh, we'll have more information on that uh, in the coming months. Do I need a liquor license to have my chefs sell liquor on the menu? Yeah, so it depends on state regulations and your local municipalities. But yes, you do have to have a liquor license in order to um, be allowed listed to sell alcohol. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for your question. If you had to give uh, one tip to a merchant who's setting up their menu for the first time, what would that be? Anything that's available in the store, put it on your menu on DoorDash. Um, customers are seeking you out on there because they like something that you offer, and nothing is more disappointing than finding out that that item is not built the same way on DoorDash as it would be on your menu at your location. Uh, another question. I don't know if this uh, question is too soon, but uh, as far as integration, um, you know, with like the POS uh, platforms, is there anything in particular that I should always look out for? If I have a general adjustment, I would adjust it on my, you know, like toast. Uh, is there anything in particular that I would need to check in on with DoorDash to make sure it, it's, you know, just the same or something I have to manually adjust myself. Anything that I should, you know, keep an eye out on? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, with POS integration, although we like we, the goal is to always make sure like it's as seamless as possible. So whenever you're making updates, I guess you're using a Toast POS, right? You want to make sure like those updates are actu actually publishing on your DoorDash menu the way that you would like for it to see, right? Because depending on like what updates you're making, like what you're making, whether it's like item descriptions or photos, always check to make sure it's reflected the right way that you want to see it on DoorDash. Because for whatever reason, you know, technology is not always so perfect, but we want to make sure like we always get it right. That way when customers are ordering from your store on DoorDash is exactly how it should be if they were coming into your store directly to order in person. Another thing that I would say to look out for is 
your store hours, right? There's different ways that you can update your store hours on DoorDash. And depending on like what's happening in your restaurant, let's say like it's really busy and you know, for ex let's say it's like 12 p.m. is like rush hour, lunch hour, right? Rush hour, lunch hour. Um, if you know for a fact like you're not able to fulfill orders and it's and for a certain amount of time because it's so busy in store, you want to make sure you're making the update on your Toast POS, but then also make sure it's reflected in DoorDash. Because depending if you're temporarily pausing your store or you're adjusting the store hours entirely, those updates might be a little bit different depending on how you're making it through your Toast portal. So, always want to, so all in all, I'm saying like do a check-in, no, dye your eyes and like cross your teeth just to make sure like things are reflected the right, the right way that you would like for it to be on a DoorDash store. Um, but if you want to learn more about Toast integration, I can definitely talk more about it with you one-on-one -on -one if you like or, or anyone else um, after the session or at the, at the solution station. So my first question is, um, you mentioned something about the photo shoot. Is this going to be more of like a virtual photo shoot or is it more of like an actual physical photo shoot? An actual photographer in your local area will be able to come out to you to like take photos of your menu items. So like you can schedule for ac actual photographer to come to your restaurant to take photos. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we'll be in the solution station shortly after this. If you have any questions. Thank you.